Is it okay if I come down here a little bit? Good. I want to thank you for having our family here. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I didn't plan for this, but obviously it's in the works, so I want to be faithful. Um, I'm not going to really talk too much this morning. I'll let everybody else do the talking. I think you guys just need the breakthrough, right? I realize at the end of the day, people are like, that's wonderful, but just bring us the goodies. <laughs> you know, you eat all your food so you can get the dessert. And you're, you know, at the end of the day, what you came here is you just need a breakthrough, right? You put your time into it. You put your money into it. So I'm a problem solver, a uh, spiritual engineer. And what that means is an energy technician. And what that means is, is the faster you can solve the problem and get to A to B, the more worth you are. So uh, I just pretty much consult full time and, um, and have been doing a lot of different things uh, with where we're at kind of as a generation and where we're at as humanity in uh, this going cosmic era. And so I'm not really in churches much. Um, I was told we're supposed to be heavily minded, but, uh, and so I like, I like Seattle. It has a space needle. Yeah. <laughs> it, it points the way up, you know, to heaven, the cosmos in this uh, multidimensional creation we live in. That God's in all, above all, and through all things, and fills the whole thing, and it's a beautiful place we live, and we're all in that, and that's also in us. It's, it's one. It really is a unified field, if you want it to be. And so uh, what I wanted to do first, actually, is, is have a friend of mine that's here with me named Richard. He's from South Africa, and uh, he's currently sang in, in the United States over in California, um, but I want him to come up and share, I think it was about six years ago, I went to South Africa. I will say this, I have a, I've been off the scene for five years about, and I don't really plan on coming back to it. If I do, take this in love, but I'm going to probably have to do it in a non-turf war place, like at a hotel or something. Just because where I walk in, in my mind and my world, my orbit, and the relationships I'm in are, are, are not what this framework usually is but you'll see today the fruit will be there but if I was to talk about what comes with it it would destroy your box probably and <laughs> I, I might get a phone call from the Vatican so uh, we're there in on everything too so uh, uh, we all love our black box, <laughs> you know. I like a light box, and and <laughs> and so <laughs> I I will say something. I uh, as much as I love being in these settings, it's only difficult if if I was to just share what I've noticed when I open my mouth is when the trouble begins, <laughs> <laughs> depending on the setting I'm in, and. Uh, and so on one level, you get a whole lot of extra talk, and really the time, the energy, the effort, the money is not that good for that, you know, just on that. And then on the other area, you might get the intelligence agencies coming and calling you saying, shh, be quiet, what are you supposed to do? So on one level, you have people who don't believe in you're outside the world. On the other end, the people who are actually intelligent, intelligence agents will come and like, hey, don't, don't do that. That's national security. I'm like, well, shouldn't we all be able to know the truth? I mean, revisionist history isn't fun. I mean, shouldn't we have real history and real current events and what's really going on in our solar system right now? Because we're supposed to be heavily minded, cosmic minded, you know, so we're, we're part of this universe. It's nice to know our place in it. I mean, we got Boeing over here. and I love aerospace. That's where you wonder where things are going. It's going to go into energy technology department, and it's going to go into aerospace. So if you want to know what's going on on the earth, I will say one thing, uh, Years ago, I said there'll be a company that comes on the scene named SpaceX. And uh, the biggest thing that'll happen in your generation will be SpaceX. And everyone, when I was in a church environment, looked at me like, what are you talking about? What does that have to do with souls? <laughs> I'm like, uh, we're supposed to be relevant to our generation. So one thing people think being relevant is actually just getting out of King James and talking normal with someone. <laughs> yeah. 
but, but there's another level of relevancy, which is being relevant to the issues and topics of the day. And when you actually become relevant, it could destroy some of your fundamental theological framework boxes. And then the, the truth can be a very discomforting and inconvenient truth. So we actually don't want to know the truth because we already have our national security in something. And so sheep scare easy. Aren't you glad you're not a sheep but a human? <laughs> sheep scare easy and they don't think too much. Aren't you glad you're a human being? And more than that, you're a spirit. So shepherds are supposed to reproduce shepherds, other humans. Sheep begot sheep. Check out them out in the field. They go to mass. There's a whole mass of them, you know. <laughs> now we have mass media. Just steering committees, you know. Once you get into the consciousness, you get into the electromagnetic field, you start steering the reality. So whoever controls the reality construct box within the left brain programming controls the masses if they plug into it. Then we usually get too caught into a personality, into their energy, into their charisma, their magnetism, into their emotions, and then into the setting of what they look like and the setting that they're in. We, we assume it's established and knows what, what the heck it's talking about. And then if you want to talk about information, it's like, hey, don't lean on your understanding. It's like, are you kidding me? I, saw, I thought I was told to get wisdom above all things. And wisdom means you know how things work. You understand the engineering. You understand the process. You understand how to get from A to B. You understand the dynamics. You understand your positioning in it and how to navigate through it successfully in life. So in order to be relevant, we have to know who we are, where we came from, and I mean really came from, and what we're doing here. <laughs> And, and what's actually going on in these times, and it, it might hurt our feelings, but I'd rather know the truth than not know the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have disclosure than not have it. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I've gone through quite a journey the last five years of education into the ancient world and understanding our true human history and understanding the real history of this earth and understanding the real history of the solar system. So most of us, when we hear Solomon say, hey, there's nothing new under the sun, we think Earth. No, there's nothing new in the solar system. And so Mars will be a big thing. I was in Iraq and speaking to some different leaders and asking them if they're prepared for what we're going to, you know, for Mars and everything, how you're going to position yourself because the tourism industry is going to go up in your country. So these are conversations I'm having behind the scenes is, is Mars is a really big deal and always has been. Planet of War, there's a lot going on on Mars. You know, and it's on Earth, it's in Heaven. Well, your two local planets are Venus and Mars if you want to know what's going on in Heaven. At least know what's going on in your neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, we can get interstellar after that, but let's just not leave the local neck of the woods because nothing new under the sun. So it's not new. It's just going to be maybe new to you, but it's not new to God. It's not new to the human race. And and I'm going to take one thing off the board is you talk about anything with relevant issues right now. There's two verses in the Bible, and most people out of fear will scare, and they'll go, Nephilim, before the flood, after. <gasps> it's like, right, you're a fainting goat. <laughs> you know? It's like, look, can we just have reality? But we've already been front-loaded in our left brain thinking and the subconscious, to already our filter and lens has already been messed with. But if you actually share the truth, it starts processing through that beyond a nanosecond. And so you have to watch out for misinformation, disinformation, because it'll steer you and guide you in the wrong direction. You'll be misled and misguided, and you'll think you're going in the right direction, and it might be totally over there, because that's the art of counterintelligence, the psychological operations. So if someone get in your head and play head games and steer you around, they already have your body, because they have the decision-making matrix through the box you think of. So if you want to know what black magic really is, it's putting the wrong information or knowledge within the consciousness, within the mind, which is in a different dimension. Your brain's in your body, but your mind and emotions, and once it gets in there, it then goes into your electromagnetic field. And through that in your central nervous system, now you're processing because your DNA is what? It's solid, it looks like, but isn't everything first energetic? So your DNA is energetic than solid. And there can be other energetic things that aren't solid also in the DNA. So it's a lot more than two-stranded. Okay, so we're, it's, it's about the seed. <laughs> it's about the DNA.
we'll make it light like this. You're on earth, and earth is next to that sun, so are you starseed. Well, at least we know you're at least from the solar system, a part of you. I'm not even talking about your spirit and soul. I'm just talking about your genetics. So I think we had fun there. Um, <laughs> but once you can mess with the reality and mess with the mind and the emotions and have a soul tie to the mind framework box, and then that mind framework box has a soul tie into the genetics of the DNA, and then into the body's programming, then into the brain, once you get it in there, it becomes cellular memory. And then it passes on repetition from generation to generation, epigenetics. And so you could have some dormant stuff in you that when I pray in a minute, you might find yourself vibrating off your seat. And so I'm not going to touch anyone. I'm just going to kind of bring a little key. I'm just kind of laying a little something out. How many right now are already starting to vibrate a little as I'm talking about you? You wear like stuff stirring. Yeah. Okay. So I asked my son, should I tell the truth when I go up there? He said, yes, but be careful. <laughs> so I now understand, I'll just say this, what's going on in my life. And I understand what's been going on in my life. And what I thought it was, it wasn't. But it is God. And so God doesn't fit in our box, but he also might not fit in the boxes we were given that are called his box. Because once you control the history, you control the reality construct. And then if you go outside of that construct, it's not looking to budge. You're wrong. Because this business has worked up a long time. Are you understanding what I'm saying right now? That's why a lot of you are vibrating right now. See, so your box may not get it, but the truth resonates. You can't stop the resonance. The word and the spirit agree. I mean the word and spirit. And so truth is truth. If you're hungry for truth and you're hungry for freedom, you know, it's out there. And it's in there. It's an inner space and it's an outer space. You're not going to heaven. You're already there. Earth is in heaven, the first layer. Be heavenly minded. Well, you need to be earthly minded first because earth is the first base in heaven. Isn't earth already in the universe? Isn't the universe the cosmos? Isn't it on earth as in heaven? Well, first know what's going on in your local world. Is that your home planet from which you open up to be solar system, to be galactic, to be interstellar, to be universal? And that's just getting you to realize I'm standing in the universe right now, which you already are, and you're sitting in it right now, too. You're right now sitting on a planet in the whole universe. Yeah. That's really what we call heavenly minded. It's pretty simple, isn't it? not complicated so don't just be earthly minded be heavenly minded right now you and I are standing in the whole universe and then it says don't be just not heavenly don't just be temporally minded timeline minded because time is an illusion it's not what you think it is not in a straight line the earth goes in a circle it goes in a circle on the sun the sun and the year goes through all the zodiac houses and then once every over 2,000 years it goes through each one and then the, our solar system with the earth in it and your body on it right now goes through a whole galactic lap around the whole galaxy. Millions of years. It's wheels within wheels. So don't be temporally minded because if you're temporally minded, you're, it's okay to be aware of your rotation on earth. It's right now at 24 hours a day where Mars is at 24 and a half. So which one's right? Well, they both are, but they go off relevance to the sun. But the sun or moon won't be your light. The glory of God will be your light, right? They both go off the galactic center. We love our 12s, 12 hours of the day, 12 apostles, 12 tribes, 12 constellations. I can go into 12 foundations, 12 gates, 12 everything, and then you got one at the center called the galactic center. The, every sun came from, and all the planets and moons from them. Isn't that the center? So if there's a field around Earth, and the electromagnetic field of the sun goes around the, all the solar system, doesn't the electromagnetic field of the galaxy go around every single hundreds of yeah. billions of planets and suns in the whole galaxy? There's your secret. <laughs> it's a galactic gate. A galactic glory, galactic council, 
galactic gate. Isn't that the birthing of everything within this neck of the woods that we call in this galaxy Milky Way? Eridanus, Andromeda's next door. And aren't you connected right now to your body? Isn't your body connected to Earth? Isn't Earth then connected to the sun and all the planets in it? Isn't that connected to all the other suns of its local neighbors of Sirius over here, Pleiades and Alcyon and others? Isn't that all then connected to the galactic center? Wouldn't that be the mother of all the suns and all the planets that produce life and hold life? And if it's all energy, it's not even three-dimensional like you see it. So don't be temporally minded, or you might think in straight lines when the whole thing's in a circle. So if you feel like you're going in a circle, it's because you are. <laughs> so I, I want to... Uh, I want to let my friend Richard come up here and share because six years ago we were in South Africa and that will be a really important place in the days ahead because I read that the gold there was good. And God looked, didn't have a man to work the field. In the field, man was supposed to work in. And the gold there was good. Gold field is called gold mine. You ever heard of a gold digger? <laughs> South Africa, the gold there is good. I would like to have him share. I prayed for him six years ago. I, I didn't touch him like I won't do today. And just that realm hit. And I didn't understand what was going on in my life. I do now. And uh, so grateful. And, uh, but he got touched six years ago, and a phenomenon happened in his life. And a lot of those things happened around my life with, all the, with different people where I was at, but I never heard of another ministry that had that type of stuff happening. So no one understood what I was talking about <laughs> until I got in the right relationships with people in Space Command and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I've been in the wrong neck of the woods. I've been... A, <laughs> I, I've been heavily minded, but yes. relevant in true history and true present and where we're going, heavily minded. Yes. We're talking about cosmic consciousness. We're talking about being universally aware. We're talking about real history. We're talking about what's currently going on. And so I, I'll let him come up and I'll say, I, I said years ago, I said, because I was told there'll be a company called SpaceX that comes on the scene. And it'll be the most important pivotal thing that happens in a generation because it'll mark the commercialization of space. Well, this is good in Seattle because you have Boeing, and Boeing has Phantom Works, you know, and Lockheed has Skunk Works, a lot of works, cool. Um, this is where stuff's really, it's, it's amazing, so I encourage you to strap in. I, I encourage people to wear their flight suit today because starships were meant to fly. <laughs> and we have a space needle. We have Boeing. We have aerospace. We have energy technologies that's through the roof. And where we're going, humanoid has been before, but we haven't here on earth. Publicly, corporately, and the commercialization of it. We're never going back, folks. We already crossed the threshold. It's just going to start opening wide. And it'd be good that we get the right filter to match the times, or we're going to go down kicking and screaming. And you might think you missed God, where all you did is missed your box. You want to come and share what happened with you? Sure. Can you give him a hand? Uh, I just want to say that this family is just, they just release great love and great purity. Um, they're incredible, especially the kitties. <laughs> uh, so seven years ago, um, I'd never been to a prophetic conference um, I met my wife, and she was full of the spirit. She was quite radical, um, but we, were, we weren't even, we were just relatively friends then, and she invited me to go to my first ever prophetic conference, and uh, there Jason Westerfield was there, Jess was there, Ocean was there, and Bella was there, um, and I remember I got, you know, one night, I was standing about over there, and as I'm sharing, I think he's going to do it again. Um, so I was standing about over there, and uh, I remember um, 
a wave of power hit. And I thought it was, he, he said, okay, God's going to release great power, and it's only going to come in a few. And uh, just watch out. So I'm watching out. I'm like, oh, no, all these crazy Christians. <laughs> and then he says, okay, it's coming in one, two, three. And I look around, and then suddenly I get hit by this wave of power. I fly back two rows of chairs. I clear out a bunch of chairs, two grannies, and uh, some other people. <laughs> Um, and I go into this encounter, I go, now I have language for it, but then it was quite scary because I had no language for any of this stuff, and it was just quite intense. And I go into this encounter, and I, I went into this trance for about an hour, and then post that, uh, for a seven-day period, I, I would shake under the power of God, um, and God would come visit me in dreams and visions. I'd sleep three hours a night, and I would just shake and shake and shake. Often I wouldn't eat just for seven days or six or seven days. And during this time, I'd get dreams and visions. I'd see different people uh, that were going to get healed. And, and some of the phenomenal stuff that started happening, different angels would come and give me algorithms and equations and mathematical things in my, in my sleep. And uh, one of the things that was given to me was an algorithm called AODV, which is Ad Hoc On Demand Distance Vectors. And I'm an, uh, I was studying my master's in engineering at the time. And so I was given this, and it was the cornerstone uh, for my master's thesis. So I started researching this Ad Hoc On Demand Distance Vector algorithm, which is a telecommunication algorithm uh, for shortest path uh, telecommunications. And I was working with the military with that. And so with this, I started, it started just expounding. And quite often when I fall asleep during these encounters, I get given new mathematical modeling equations, simulation modeling equations. And whenever I get stuck, I'm not saying it was easy, but whenever I get stuck, I'd fall asleep and, and I have these encounters and I'd, I'd get stuff. And I went on to uh, publish a, a book. So I went on and published this book. Um, and uh, so I just brought it as a sign and a symbol for what God's going to do and release. Uh, but I also went on to, uh, there was so much favor on it that I went on to meet um, with heads of state. I went on to meet with um, head of our military, uh, head of our army, head of our navy, head of our air force, um, and uh, got to share some of the telecommunication stuff that was shown to me um, and that I'd worked out. And then I went on to be published in China, America, Denmark, um, and a number of other countries and just got to go and share um, stuff. And I had great favor with them. And... It continues, but I didn't have a grid for it in the church, and I got activated at that time. And after those seven days, it didn't just stop. Uh, it reduced to maybe about twice a week for a month period, and still I have them. And so at the moment, I'm in a collaboration with Google, and I'm working with a satellite telecommunication company. Um, and uh, yeah, quite often I'll fall asleep, and I'll get what to do next on my projects and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so obviously the spirit of uh, testimony, releases, testimony releases some great prophecies. So as I'm speaking, what happens? Because in that realm is outside of time. So as I start drawing back from those experiences, I'm going up into that realm. I'm going there. And where there was an explosion in the spirit, as I'm starting to share it, I bring it back into this time pocket because this realm is locked in by time. You don't have to, but this realm is locked in by time, and I'm bringing it to this pocket. So as I'm sharing this test me, I'm pop, and I'm breaking it out here. So if you just close your eyes, you can assume any position. And I'm just going to open it up, and then I'm going to hand it over to Jason. I'm just going to start just opening it up. And then to and fro, and to and fro, up and down, side to side. To and fro, to and fro, up and down, side to side. And right now, I just speak to the doors and the ancient gates of your mind right now that have been closed. And I speak to the doors and the ancient gates of your mind right now that have been closed. And I speak life just into them right now. So the open, just open up those doors and those ancient gates of our minds right now over minds right now, and I just start releasing technology, information, because when His glory comes, it just doesn't come for the church realm, but it comes over all the earth. So I just release glory of your mind right now, new technologies. I've been getting a lot of uh, favor just even in the finance realm. I was contacted by uh, the Bloomberg group two weeks ago. 
um, to just work with government intelligence and, and with them. So just favor in the finance industry. <laughs> just open up right now. And you guys are carrying something, like I was carrying something, and, uh, and God uh, had a, an assignment for me, and, he, and you're carrying something inside of you. So I just, whew, right now, just release and activate what you're carrying, what you're carrying. So put your hand on your heart. And God, seven years ago, it's not a coincidence that it was seven, the perfect number of completion. There's been so much cosmic alignment about this moment. Seven years ago to this day, oh, not to this day, but to this year, I just released great grace, great grace over these world changes. And I just release activation today, activation today over them activation today, Lord God, that they'd have an encounter that would propel them into destiny with favor um, in this world. I don't look like a man that would stand before uh, military uh, commanders. I don't look like a man that would stand before uh, heads of military, heads of state, defense minister of India, defense minister of Angola. Um, I don't look like that. But God, would you start activating what you prepared for your sons and daughters right now in Jesus' name? Would you start activating what you prepared for your sons and daughters in Jesus' name? Thank you, God. Well, 